For those of you that's been following the channel for any reasonable length of time, you know there are 10 to favour F1 varieties for the vegetables grow. A couple of reasons, primarily the, the varieties that I like. And the other thing and all, with F1s, in general, the quality is very, very good and similar and all. But one of the downsides, or can be a downsides, they also tend to crop together, which can be a disadvantage or an advantage. With crops that are, tend to freeze, that's no problem at all. So I've got some cauliflowers here. I've missed one or two that have blown. But there's probably three or four that I want to get out now because if I leave them any longer, I'm going to go. So join me inside the net. There's one little collier that's already gone over. There's some forming nice curds, but the money's small. I don't know whether to pick them now or leave them and risk them blowing. I'll have a look what I've got to start with. I've got a couple here that I'm going to risk. The money bad grapefruit size, so store them for another probably week or so. What I like to do is snap the leaves over. This keeps the curds nice and white. And they'll still grow inside there. So I'll just put that there. There's just another little one here. Although I think this one may be going over it. The curds have slightly gone to like a little bit of a yellow tinge, but I'll try it anyway. This is a prime example of how the crop together. I really have picked more than I wanted to, but needs must. So, if I leave these any longer, there's a risk they'll blow and go over. I've had one or two go. But some, so, if I left them a bit longer, they might have put a bit more size on. But I know with being a reduced family or they're about to be only two of us at home, these are more than good enough. So uh, I'll just get these ready and we'll get them into the kitchen and see what we're going to eat tomorrow and what's going to go in the freezer. That's very top and tailed. There's, there's one or two starting to go over, so as I say, we'll use those tomorrow. This one's just starting to blow. All these, I think, are variety Clapton. I'd have to have a look in my book, but I think they are. And so they do do a decent return. In the meantime, now I've done these, I'm gonna get the stalks out of the ground, because as I said many times before, with a brassica bed, once I've harvested the crop, I don't leave the roots in for the risk of actually attracting club root. Beginning of the season, when I planted these French beans out, I think I put about nine, maybe 11 plants out. And as I spiced them out in the bed, they looked lost on their own. And I was wondering, have I planted enough? Well, I've just done a harvest, and that there is today's picking. And that's only off two plants. There's still lots and lots of fruit left on here and all. So uh, it's a variety called Ferrari. Well worth trying. Originally I used to grow Blue Lake and the Cobra, the climbing beans, but the last couple of years I've been growing these just on the ground and as I say, probably another three or four days I'll get the same crop again. It's been a strange year gardening weather-wise. I see quite a few of the joint veg growers are struggling to get their exhibits ready for the upcoming shows. And for me personally, I've spent less time on my allotment this year than I've ever done. This is my 10th or 11th year on the site, and uh, so I haven't spent as much time on. Consequence of that is a number of weeds in the, in the beds and there. There's definitely mare's tail all over the potatoes. They've got quite a raspberry, willow herb, there's bindweed, chickweed, and the odd dandelion or so. With the mare's tail, I'll be quite honest with people. Once that's gone there, I'll be using the glyphosate spray to calm it down. It doesn't get rid of it totally, but it does actually suppress it. 
I've never had it in that bed before and once I put the potato buckets on there it just appeared and rather than keep disturbing the potatoes I've just let it go but I will have a look at it. In the meantime I have done a bit of weeding on these beds. I've got celeriac in the front and the parsnips behind here. I've managed to get most of the weeds out and now I'm going to be just every week or so I just run the hoe in between and uh, that'll keep them ticking over. I have done another bed up there and I'll just take it over to the brassica cage and show you. Here in the brassica bed I've cleared most of the things out now. Still got the row of Brussels sprouts in and I've put the stakes in there and actually tied them up to give them a bit of firmness for when they get a bit taller. Just got a few cabbage dotted round in the middle and along the front there got some swede and kohlrabi. So uh, this has been weeded, not thoroughly as I normally do, but I'll wait till the rest of the crop's out. I'll give it a good hoe in and then I'll probably cover it with the black sheets. The next job up, I want to have a look at my onion bed and I'm going to lift the cover off. But in the meantime, we've got some showers coming in again, it's just starting raining now. So I'm going to leave it an hour or two, see if the sun dries it out. If not, it'll be tomorrow morning. But I want you to join me and we'll get underneath the net and have a look what we got. Well, even though I waited, the sun never appeared again. In fact, I think we got more colder days than warm ones now. Last night went down to about 8 degrees. So, the plan is to get the cover off the onions and have a look what we've got. Well, most of the onions have actually flopped over, which is a good indicator. Still one or two of the kelsies sticking up right, but I'm still going to lift them now, beside because we've got that wet weather coming in, I think. Um, along there we've got uh, tough ball and vento and over the other middle bed we've got the banana shallots that's the long red florence and also the alista so i'm going to get my little fork and gently prise these out and we'll have a look what we finally got well, these are the first of the big onions as i call them and we'll say I'm happy with them. I thought these was from seed, but I just remembered the Kelsies I actually purchased as plug plants from um, DT Brown. And they've grown as big as I usually grow, so I'm probably going to be using them again next year. One strange thing, I've had one or two come up with this uh, white colouring, and they don't seem to have the traditional Kelsey shape, some of them, which is like the domed at the top. But nonetheless, then we're okay. I've just got one here as well, which is split in half, so I'm going to be using that first. Next, I'll be showing you the little tough ball and the vent towers. These are the smaller onions, they're usually 240 gram, I think, plus the or 250. I call them the 18 ounce onions anyway. Two varieties here there's tough ball on here, vento on here. I should say the vento performs slightly better, a bit bigger. But nonetheless, then both a nice set of onions and dry it out. I'll just take it over now and show you what's left of the long red florence. And these are the long red florence. As you can probably guess, these are my favourites. <laughs> they do store extremely well as it goes right into probably March, April, May next year. Done well. And uh, I've got some monsters on there. Probably one of my best years from, although last year was good as well. Most of these have been planted singly, although there's one or two where I've popped two together and there isn't much indifference in size and all. All these was grown from seed. So the variety there is called Long Red Florence. And there's just one more top I need to show you. And that's the white version of these called Alista. And as I said, these are the white banana type shallots. There's one called Alista. I used these to replace the old variety, which was called Zabrune and they haven't done quite as good, although there's some decent size on there. Nonetheless, these also store wells. Right, there's one other thing I want to mention, and that's uh, throughout the season, you've probably been following me, and the camera work has been some really good extreme shots on there, the pan shots and the follow shots, and that's all down to my cameraman, who's my daughter. She's behind the camera, doesn't want to come on the screen, but. Uh, some bad news, she's leaving us, she's up in sticks and moving north of the border for a new job. So hopefully the quality of the videos won't deteriorate. Hope you stay with me. 
So until next time, see you later. Bye for now.